I think I'm, you got to take a step back and look at the dynamics that are happening in, in the capital markets, in particular because of COVID, the elevation of biopharma and life science innovation. There's record levels of investor capital that has gone in to dedicated life sciences venture funds. Upwards of $38 billion raised in the last two years, dwarfing any other similar time frame. just to give the listeners some sense of how historic and how substantial those investment pools have become. Now, as that capital has come in and also against a backdrop where it's been a long bull run for the public biotechnology marketplace up until recently, where companies that had opportunities to tap the public markets were able to do so in a fashion on a regular basis that provided exits and liquidity for investors that were supporting those companies. So it's a high functioning capital markets ecosystem. The bio, the public markets have pulled back somewhat and probably will be somewhat muted when compared to the last two years, but still very strong going forward. I don't see any stoppage or a shutdown of the window of opportunities for the foreseeable future in the public biotechnology marketplace. Perhaps changes in valuation expectations, corrections on that front, but the, the markets are open. Now, if you look at that backdrop and this huge bolus of capital that's been raised in these dedicated funds, more and more of that money is interested in getting engaged in really early stage opportunities. In fact, seed to series A is the greatest value inflection point <clears throat> that's seen with regards to step ups in valuation. SVB did a report and that number sits around two times from seed to series A. More importantly, a lot of these investors that historically invested in later stage deals, series B and beyond, have no choice now, but to be investing at the, at least series A level so they can get into the cap table. Meaning if they don't participate early, they can't get in late and they, their business models become flawed downstream. And so historically late stage investors now have an interest in early stage opportunities. And why is this happening? A big driver for this is science is moving rapidly back to this whole Again, convergence and applying computing to life sciences. Look at some of the breakthroughs that we've seen that are now really accelerating after incubating for many years coming out of the human genome project. We're now seeing a lot of real world applications for understanding human biology at the genetic level. And with that occurring, science is moving faster. Outcomes are improving for patients. <clears throat> Diseases that were once unthinkable with regards to being able to uh, effect in a positive way are now open opportunities. And with those greater outcomes, there are liquidity events happening sooner in the cycle. Again, oftentimes from series A through IPO, that exit can happen in three years or four years. And with that type of cycle, it's inviting a lot more investors into the biotech investor universe. Why is this important for ecosystems that are not Boston and San Francisco. The rate limiting variable for biotech innovation is not and will not be capital for the foreseeable future. It will be access to specialized talent pools that have access to specialized laboratory space in communities that they want to be a part of. The amount of space, for example, in Boston roughly 30 million square feet of wet labs is fully utilized. You can't build lab space fast enough. You can't hire scientists and professionals fast enough. Even if you're public, even if you've just raised $150 million series B round or a massive $100 million series A round. So with that as a backdrop, there will be a need to be investing in opportunities in ecosystems that have similar attributes at the raw input level to what we see in Boston and the Bay Area, but are, are still early in their ecosystem build cycle. So that's really what Chicago represents. And so <clears throat> that's why you're seeing so much investment into life sciences, real estate, and the nexus then to accessing opportunities to grow and scale companies in markets that are not Boston and San Francisco. Clearly those cities will continue to grow and develop as they are really the, the core drivers for the global biotech universe. And having 
connections and wormholes into Boston and San Francisco are required of any ecosystem in alternate geographies. But I do think that cities like Chicago and others that have similar attributes like Atlanta, Houston, Nashville, LA, Seattle are really in the next 10 years will represent the opportunity to facilitate and fuel the distributed biotech company of the future. 